On May 8, 2013, a new piece of technology was shown to the world for the first time. A floating concrete base upon which a wind tower and turbine will be placed, creating the first floating offshore wind turbine in North America. The invention is also the first such turbine in the world constructed out of concrete and composite materials. Researchers at the University of Maine developed the technology and Chinbro engineers and craftspeople built it with the goal of harnessing the vast renewable wind energy that's available off the Maine coast. So why is this important? It's important because, because offshore wind is our largest untapped renewable resource in the state of Maine. We have 156 gigawatts of offshore wind within 50 miles of our coast. That's the equivalent of 156 nuclear power plants worth of wind blowing off the coast of Maine. So what do we want to do here? We want to try to figure out how to bring that energy cost effectively to benefit the state of Maine. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, in the U.S. overall, there's the equivalent of uh, 4,000 gigawatts of offshore wind within 50 miles of our coast. That's enough energy to power the United States four times over. That's how big offshore wind is in the US. So what have we done so far? We have developed what we call the Volturnus technology. Volturnus is Volt, V-O-L-T, Turn, T-U-R-N, and U-S, because it's US-based technology. Volturnus will provide a paradigm shift in offshore wind technology. It is a floating te wind turbine technology that, that has uses for the first time an advanced concrete hull and advanced composites. The Volturnus technology is one step closer to cost-effectively harness offshore wind. Today, offshore wind is too expensive. In Europe, offshore wind costs twice the cost of land-based wind. The purpose of Volturnus is to bring that cost down. That's why we're doing this. The National Department of Energy goal is not easy to reach. It's to reach 10 cents a kilowatt hour by 2020 behind the meter. 10 cents a kilowatt hour is our goal. And hopefully, Volturnus is a step towards that goal. Uh, we're also targeting a 100-year life with this technology. Typical offshore wind farms in Europe are 20 to 25-year lives. We want a 100-year life. That's why we're using composites. That's why we're using concrete. Uh, it can be, this unit can be carefully assembled dockside and deployed upright, uh, vertically up from a dock all the way to its location offshore. It only needs 35 feet of draft, the full-size unit, to deploy it offshore. That's a big deal. You can fabricate this unit dockside and tow it out completely assembled all the way to, to, to be placed 20 miles offshore. How big is the big unit? The big unit will be bigger than the Washington Monument. It's 600 feet tall from the bottom to the top of the blade. Uh, the unit uh, has about one and a half football field uh, uh, rotor diameter. One and a half football field rotor diameter. That's the big unit. What you see behind you is, is the, the smaller unit. It's one to eight scale. We want to walk before we run. That's why we have the smaller units. So think about when, when this curtain opens, we're going to grow that by a factor of eight. When you grow it by a factor of eight, you couldn't fit, fit the hull in this room. Okay, that's how big that hull would be. It was fabricated here in the lab, completely in the lab, right behind the curtain by the Chimbro team and you main team working side by side together. What you'll see behind is just the hull. That's what we have in there. The tower and the turbine are on top of it because they won't fit in the building. So, um, so the hull is made out of concrete. Uh, it's going to be, um, it was fabricated, as you see right here in the lab. These are sh shots of it, the formwork for the concrete being placed over the last few months, since February. Um, the concrete is very unique concrete. It weighs only 105 pounds per cubic foot. It has over 8,000 pounds per square inch capacity. That's a very lightweight concrete. Uh, it was a special mix that we had to design for this project. We'll start disassembling the unit and we'll take it down to Brewer in Chimbro's facility. Uh, right in Brewer, the unit uh, will be assembled dockside in Brewer by Chimbro's team and it will be lifted in one, one, one crane lift and placed, as you see, in the Penobscot River right there next to Chimbro's dock. And then there's going to be a, a main maritime tugboat that will tow it down the Penobscot River uh, uh, starting on Saturday morning, uh, Ju June 1st and it will reach Castine uh, on Sunday evening, June 2nd. Uh, and on June 3rd in Castine, it will be plugged into the grid and will create electricity. Uh, it'll be sitting in about um, uh, 75 feet of water, 1,000 feet from shore, plugged into the grid. It will be the first offshore wind turbine plugged into the grid in the United States. So it'll ha it happened here in Maine, it happened here in the slab, it happened all because we all worked together.
This is the blue sky, the blue sky plan opening up. <laughs> What you see behind us is, yes, a concrete structure. Um, the paint you have on it, it it's it got two layers of paint. The one above the water would be yellow. Below the water is red. So what you see above the water is just the yellow part. Below the water will be red. The tower that will go on top of it goes right in the center, right in the center of this unit, right on top. And then the turbine goes on top of the tower. Uh, so uh, the, the three columns you see on, on, on the outside are 120 degrees apart. Uh, they're, they're called radial columns, that's what we call them, and that's what provides the buoyancy to the unit. How does concrete float? Because it's not all solid concrete, it's, all, there's, it's hollow on the inside, that's what makes it float. If you've sailed a catamaran, it has two hulls, this is a trimaran with three hulls. And the three hulls are the three columns, 120 degrees from the center. And, and the, the tower on top of that will be made out of composites, and then on top of that we'll have the turbine. The turbine actually is outside the lab right now, getting ready to go to Chimbrough's facility in Brewer. And with that, I'll give it to my friend, Pete Vigier. I tell you, Pete has a vision. Pete had the passion to, to do what it takes for the state of Maine. Without Pete, without, what, without the, the, the hard work he's done here, we would not have this unit behind you. Please help me welcome Pete Vigier. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at behind me is the first offshore floating turbine in North America. On top of that, this is the first offshore floating turbine in the world with a concrete substructure and a composite tower. The first in the world, built by the University of Maine and Maine people. Some of you have heard me say before in multiple presentations, why not Maine? This is a reflection of what we're capable of achieving when we work together in a collaborative manner and look beyond the boundaries of our past and look to the future. When we look to the future, the future of this state the future of this university and its people are what we will make it. It is not something that we will inherit or something that will be given to us. This is a reflection and an example of what is possible, what main people, main organizations working together are capable of achieving. That's the future. And hopefully, as we go forward and complete the studies with the 1 8 scale and move forward, then we'll have a full scale unit that will be made out of material like concrete and cement that are locally manufactured. This is the only concrete substructure that is being promoted and suggested as we know it today in the world. That's what's possible. And it's possible because people work together.